three. I hope that you can use these special triangles today to help you solve these questions. And the reason why the special triangles is in this section is because there are roots, which I hope you see, cube root, right, and a square root. And I'm hoping that you can also use the idea of similar triangles to help you out with this case. So I think in the first one here, I'm asking you to figure out the actual exact distance across the base. So I want this whole distance from here to here, okay? But I'm hoping that maybe by splitting this up into two parts, let's call this part x, maybe I'll call this part y, we can more easily find out the length of the base by first of all finding x and then finding y, okay? Now, if you look at the triangle with the x, I think what you see is something like this, and I'll draw this out for you again down here, okay? So I see a triangle, here's x, here's 30 degrees, this length is 40. And my question to you is, do you think this triangle is similar to the one on the top or the one on the bottom? Now, you could use tangent, but unfortunately with tangent is then you have to use your calculator, you get a decimal, I don't want any decimal answers, right? So I want you to actually give exact value answers. So which triangle should I use, the one on the top here or the one on the bottom? Top, okay? I'm gonna actually rotate the one on the top so it has the same orientation. So I'm going to think this is 30, this is 60, this is 90, and I'm going to rotate it so that, well, the hypotenuse is still 2, the shorter side is 1, and then now this is root 3. Okay? Yes, Vincent. Pretty much, yeah. So you're going to now use similar triangles to find the ratio. So x is related to the root 3, and I guess you can also say that the 40 is related to the 1. So you can set up a ratio if you wish, something like this, maybe x over root 3 is equal to, can someone help me for the other side? x over root 3 equals to, 40 over yeah, 40 over 1, thank you. And if I ask you to solve for x, we can just cross multiply now, and this one's pretty straightforward, x just equals to 40 root 3, okay? Now, I'd like you to try to find y yourself using a similar method, okay? So figure out which triangle this is similar to, set up a ratio, and go ahead and solve for y. And then once you've done that, I think you can solve for the length of the base. The part, I think you have the triangle here. Oops, I'll draw in red. y, once again, 30 and 30. So if you set up the ratio, I believe it's y over root 3 in this case equals to 30 over 1. And if you cross multiply, you get 30 root 3. Is that what you guys all got? We. Oui. And then, of course, the length of the base is just those two things put together, x plus y. So that would be 40 root 3s. And you add to that 30 root 3s. And how many root 3s do we have there? 70 of them. Good. 70 root 3, and the units here are centimeters. Okay, and this is your exact answer. All right? Okay. So try an next one, please. Okay. So go ahead and try the next one. And I think the next one is very similar, except now you got this crazy base. I'm going to ask you to just once again split this up into two parts. It's much easier to do two separate things and then put them together. Okay. And I think for the one in X now, you're going to think, hmm, which triangle should I use for the one with X? Should I use the 30-60-90 triangle? Or should I use the 45-45-90 triangle? And your answer is, which triangle would you use? Which one's that? Yeah, the bottom one, right? 45, 45, 90. Good. 1, 1, root 2. Okay. So once again, go ahead and just try to figure this out. Find out the length of x. Then go ahead and find out the length of y. And if you've done both of them, add them up. So I have here x over 1 equals to root 2 over root 12. I will cross multiply. That's root 12x equals to root... Thank you. I'm glad someone's awake today. Oops. So be careful here, please. you got to match them up properly, right? x 
is the one on the top, so I guess the root 12 should also be the one on the top of my fraction. Thank you. Now, you can do this many ways. I would probably simplify the root 12 over root 2 first. Anyone know what that is? Oh, okay, you can do that, but I was just thinking easier, just 12 divided by 2. Root 6, yeah, so this is just x over 1 equals to root 6, so I guess therefore x equals to root 6. Okay? If you want to make it into a mixed fraction, you can, but I think this one's a little bit easier with this. Not mixed fraction, mixed radical, sorry. And then I'll ask you to do the same thing with the y now. So we've got y, this is 30, and I'm going to ask you to make it similar to the 30, 60, 90 triangle. Right. By the way, you were supposed to memorize these triangles, so I hope you are at least familiar with this now. <coughs> so 1, 2, root 3, okay. So why don't you go ahead and try to compare now once again. I'll compare the y with the root 3. And then the other, other side I have is the root 2 root 2. I guess that compares with the 2. So here we go. I'll say y over root 3 equals to 2 root 2 over 2. And I guess the 2 and the 2 can cancel each other out. That's nice. And if I just multiply the 3 to the other side, I get y equals to root 2 times 3, which is root 6. Okay. Yeah, so now just add them together and you'll find the length of the base. So once again, the length of the base, just add both x and y's. So base equals to root 6 plus root 6. By the way, please don't write down root 12. Okay. That's wrong. Remember 2 root 6 radical, when you have like radicals with the same radical or same radicand and the same index, you can add them together. I see that there are two of these root 6s. All right, so just questions involving special triangles. Okay, once again, you'll see it comes back in this chapter because there are radicals. And now I'm going to ask you to turn the page. We'll do two more questions here. And then we'll be done in section 5.1. Okay. I'm going to let you uh, try example number seven on your own first. Okay, see if you can uh, figure this out. This one talks about geometry, so once again, there's lots of radical work that happens in geometry. So here in example number seven, I've got this square, and it's inscribed in a semicircle. Yes, mine is uh, colored, yours is not, sorry. And it says the area of this semicircle, hint, 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 semicircle is 36 pi. And the question is, what is the exact perimeter of the square? Now, I think to help you out with this, my suggestion to you all is perhaps you want to figure out the radius first, okay? See if you can find the radius of this semicircle, and from there, you might be able to then go ahead and find the length of one of its sides, all right? So, I'll let you think about this. Find the radius yet? Can someone help me out? What should I do? What's the formula for the area of a circle? Pi r squared. Good. What's the area of the whole circle then? Don't say 36 pi, because that's only the semicircle. If I want the whole thing, i got to times it by 2. Right. So if you're looking for the area of the whole circle, it's 72 pi. Okay, so that's one little trick. And then, of course, the pi then cancel out. You want to take the square root on both sides. Yes, there should be a plus minus, but because I'm talking about radius, I just want the positive answer. So r equals root 72. Or, for some of you who's made this the simplest form, it'd be? Six root yeah, 6 square root 2. Okay, remember, 72 is equal to 36 times 2. 6 root 2. All right. That's the good first part. But now, what should I do next? I want to find the actual perimeter, right? So you need at least one of the sides of the square. Special triangles? I don't know if the angle is a 60, 30, 90. Don't guess. Don't assume. <laughs> you might guess that I'm very bright, but I'm not. So you know. Use a protractor. I don't have a protractor. Get one. I don't have one. I don't have any money. It's not 30, 60, 90. 
45. It's not 45 45. <laughs> okay, ladies and gentlemen, if we don't know, what are we supposed to do here? What are we trying to find, first of all? The perimeter. But before the perimeter, let's see if we can find out the side length first. So maybe I'll call this thing here the side length. Should I call it x since we don't know what that is? And if that's x, then what's this distance down here going to be? We can use y, but hey, isn't this a square? A square means the sides are the same, so this would be x over 2. Okay, I don't know if it's 1, one square over 2, Vincent, but what kind of triangle do you see here? It's a right angle triangle, and we can always go back to good old grade 8 when we learned Mr. Pythagoras. Yes, I don't have one. Anyways, so, ladies and gentlemen, I suggest you do the following then. If this is x... This is x over 2, and the radius now we know is 6 root 2. Let's just use Pythagoras. Okay. Oh, I don't like fractions. Oh, no. Oh, well. A squared plus B squared equals C. You don't need a song for this one. No, Monday morning. That'll be Wednesday morning. By the way, what's 6 root 2 all squared? <laughs> 6 squared is 36. 36 times not 4 times 2. That's just 72, right? Yeah. Say it again. Yes, x squared over 4. Thank you. Uh, how many of you don't like fractions? Yes, so what should we do to get rid of that fraction there? I don't like that divided by 4. Multiply everything by 4? Okay. Be careful. You're multiplying every single term by 4. Though. Don't forget that. So that's x squared plus 4x squared. And what's 72 times 4? Oh, no. 188. No, 144. 288. 288. Well, that's not that bad. Because 1x um, squared plus 4x squared gives you 5x squared. 5x squared gives you 288 x squared then you just divide by 5 and this is just regular algebra and now I'll say x equals to root 288 over I guess root 5 right you're squaring the whole thing <clears throat> that doesn't look that nice oh well what's the square root of 288 that actually looks really nice right I think How can we simplify that? That's 16.9. Oh, I want exact answers. Oh, 144 times 2. Yeah. That's good. That's 12 root 2. Awesome. 12 root 2 over root 5. I guess that's x. Oh, right. Then i got to find the perimeter. Oh, shoot. So what's the perimeter? Times it by 4. Good. So the perimeter is just equal to that whole thing. And I'm running out of space. Ah. Helena is rubbing off on me now. <laughs> it's 4 times the 12 root 2 over root 5, which equals to 48 root 2 over root 5. And that would be okay with me right now. By the way, later on, you'll see how I can simplify this even further, but I won't do that right now with you. We'll just leave it as a good 48 root 2 over root 5 as your exact answer. And by the way, don't forget your units, centimeters. Ta-da! Okay. So once again, lots of geometry involves square root stuff, so you'll see a lot of word problems, like what Victor was saying, we're a word problem for radicals? Yeah, you bet. Okay. And I want to show you one more, which I hope will be a quick review from last year. Remember last year when we did all that circle geometry stuff? Well, let me quickly introduce example number eight, and I'll give you some time to think about it, and then we'll try it together, okay? So here we got a large circle. This question is in your textbook, by the way. It has a center of C and diameter AB. Notice you have a smaller circle that has a center of D and diameter is also BC. Now there's this where we looked at last year. Chord AE is tangent to the smaller circle. What do we know about tangents and radiuses? When they meet, what type of angle do they create? 
90, bingo. So this must be a 90 degree angle right there. Okay, chord, remember, tangent and radius. Always give a 90 degree angle. Okay. And so the question here says if AB is 18, what is the exact length of AE? Okay, and I'll give you some time to think about this one too, but as a hint, you're going to have to use similar triangles. So like the one with the skateboard, you're going to have to use similar triangles. Now, you're not going to use similar triangles with those special angles. You're going to try to find two similar triangles in uh, this picture. Okay, that's not good. Try it out. Ladies and gentlemen, what's AB? 18. Okay, so I think CB is 9, right? So therefore, the length of CD is 4.5. Agreed? I'll go AC is also 9. What else in this picture is 4.5? Well, if I call this point here F, I think the distance from D to F is also 4.5. Okay? Because both of them are radius of the smaller circle. Now, I said use similar triangles. Has anyone spotted the two similar triangles yet? Yeah. The one inside and outside. How do we label them? A, I'll, I'll try to draw them out for you. A, D, F. Okay. So, A, D, F. Good. And what are the lengths that we know for A, D, F? I think D, F is 4.5. What's the length of A, D? 13.5, okay, once again, AD is just the 9 plus the 4.5, I like that. Okay, that's one triangle, and where's the other one that's similar to it? The bigger one, okay, the bigger one, which is A, B, E, same right angle here. By the way, do you know why E is a right angle? What do you mean it's tangent? That one's not tangent. Yeah, but that's not the smallest circle we're talking about. E is on the bigger circle. Okay. It's the chord. Well, say that more, Vincent. Tell me more. Chord and and the thingy. Oh, do you know this is an inscribed angle? Remember what an inscribed angle means? An inscribed angle is one angle that touches the edge of the circle. And if I were to compare it with this angle here, this is called the central angle. Remember? And now the one here, this angle, ACB. Remember, the inscribed angle is always equal to a half of the central angle. This is a property that we learned last year. Oh, no, all that stuff disappeared. So the central angle, of course, is 180 degrees. So what's half of 180? Yeah. Yeah, that's 90. <laughs> yeah. Oh, ho, 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 ho. 90 degrees, OK. That's why they're similar. Right? Angle F, shh, quiet please. Angle F, angle E are both 90 degrees. Angle A, of course, is the same. So, of course, then, therefore, angle D must equal to angle B because the third angles in a triangle must always be equal. So, I think in this case now, do we know any lengths for this big triangle here? We have to know at least one of these lengths. Does anyone know? 18 for AB. That's good. Okay? And our goal here is to find out the exact length of AE. So I want the length of AE. That's what I'll call X. So let's see if we can match this up now, dear friends. Let's see if we can match up the length of X with what's on the uh, green triangle. AF, good. And then I guess we can match up uh, 18 with the AD. Okay, I've got a problem. On that green triangle, I don't know AF. Or do I? Pythagoras, right. So I think the first thing you should do with here is let's use Pythagoras to find AF. Okay? So please, once again, for this one, use your... <coughs> Well, I'd use, special, I'd use Pythagoras first, but please make sure your answer is not a decimal because I want an exact length. Um, well, I just want the square root of a number. Right? Can someone help me out? What's 13.5 squared? 169. Yeah, that makes... 
Okay, now what about this 4.5 squared? What's for what's 4.5 squared? 4.5 squared. 20.25. So I subtract that from the other side. Okay. Well, that's nice because that equals to 162. That's cool. By the way, I want AF, not AF squared. So what's my next step? Square root. And then I'm going to ask you to please simplify the square root of 162. Now, I think 162 is 2 times 81. 81 is nice because that's a perfect square. So that's just 9 root 2. Yay. So AF equals to 9 root 2. I like that. But I want AE. So now I'm going to ask you to use similar triangles. Okay. So now use similar triangles. And let's solve for AE. AE is X. I know now that corresponds to the sign AF which you just told me is 9 root 2. Thank you very much. And then the other corresponding sides that are similar, that's the 18 with the 13 root 5. And now go ahead and cross multiply and solve. And I want x as an exact answer. So I'll have 13.5x equals to 18 times 9 root 2. 18 times 9, 162. Okay. Can I rewrite 13.5 as a fraction? I'll write that as 27 over 2 just because I want a nice number. Okay. So remember 13 and a half. You can simplify 27 over 2? No, like Oh, I'll do that now. Yeah, sure. So x just equals to 162 root 2. And since you're dividing by a fraction, you're <laughs> multiply by the reciprocal. So 2 over 27. Okay, now Edison, help me simplify. What does 162 and 27 simplify to? You're just taking 162 divided by 13. Oh, okay, fine. If that's what you want to do, what's 162 divided by 13.5? Oh, okay. That does make, I guess that does make more sense, yes. Thanks.